Yo, what is up, guys? If you're here, you're probably looking to maybe improve the quality of your stream a little bit. Maybe your computer's just not keeping up with what you're trying to stream. There's a few tips. This is especially going to be directed at people who are using Streamlabs OBS versus regular OBS. This is just going to be kind of like a brief, like, switching over type thing and a little ba few basic details that are going to help out people that are switching from s slobs stream labs obs to obs but yeah if you have your own tips that have helped you uh go ahead and leave them down in the comments see if you can help somebody else out uh like to help each other out around here uh but yeah let's get into it all right so the first thing you're gonna do if you have stream labs obs delete it honestly uh well not quite yet we still need it for a few minutes yeah, the first thing you're gonna do go to obsproject.com you're gonna go on your this is going to be the screen that you hate that you uh end up on you've got windows mac linux linux i think it's linux right maybe so you're just going to click on whatever uh whichever one you have and it's going to download uh it's going to be it's, that part's very straightforward this whole thing is very straightforward don't get me wrong but once you have that downloaded you're gonna have we're gonna have a bit of inception here um this is obs you're going to have it's going to be blank. This is mine, obviously, so it's not going to be quite the same. But we're going to get you to where you need to be. The very first thing you do once you load this up, it's going to be very daunting. You're going to have all this. You're going to be like, oh, I got to recreate all my scenes and add my sources. It's just, I'm just going to stop. Don't. Don't. It's super easy. Trust me. You're going to go up to scene collection here. You're going to, imp you're going to click this import button. It's going to bring up every single scene collection that's even on that's on Streamlabs. Essentially, you're just gonna check off every single scene that you want, uh, and then you're gonna hit import. And then all of your scenes and your sources are going to be imported directly into OBS, and boom, you're done. That's it. Done. Yeah, you can start You know, start streaming as soon as you link up your, your Twitch account with the key and all of that stuff. It's that easy. <laughs> there is no more, like, there's no more catch. That's, it's that easy. Streamlabs OBS uses a ton of additional resources that just are unnecessary. You can be putting those resources. There's no need to put that extra stress on your computer, right? You know, getting a more efficient program that can let you put more into the game, make the game look prettier, I guess, you know? Uh, everybody wants that. Everybody wants higher FPS on their games, right? So that's step one. And that's probably going to be your one of your most helpful steps right there, just switching over. I promise you it's worth it it is so worth it and this isn't even in regards to <laughs> the recent issues with streamlabs obs that's a completely different issue you should just be using obs anyways it's better number two i don't know if this has changed i've seen conflicting posts and reports on this um i know previously though if you're not a twitch partner you're not streaming in 1080p it doesn't matter if you think you are if you're stats um if your video is set up to as a 1080p output you're not streaming 1080p put this bluntly twitch isn't going to waste the resources on allowing you know everybody to stream 1080p that puts a lot of stress on their servers there's no reason to do that they uh reserve that for partners because partners are making them more money and that's what makes the world go around is money i don't know if that's changed or not if it has cool if your computer can handle it, stream at 1080p. Um, I don't know if it's changed, to be honest. I've seen a bunch of different things. I run 720 anyways. Uh, I'm running 1080p right now, as you can see, just because I record for YouTube. Uh, and then my YouTube videos are 1080p and then looking pretty. But And and the thing is, is like a lot of people don't watch your stream on the computer. Um, and if they do... It might be off to the side and it's not full screen uh it's just the majority of people just don't do that so we're all about saving your computer resources especially if you don't have a insane streamer build computer which most of us don't uh so yeah i put my output always at 720 it really helps out it's there's just no reason not to really uh you it's still good quality right so the second thing well it would be the third thing, uh, and I kind of jumped around. I was trying not to do this, but my ADHD, and I just ramble and talk. These Twitch chats and stream information and stats and controls and all of this cool stuff here, 
you're just going to go into view. You have your docs here, right? All of this stuff here. So your Twitch chat here, you first load up. They're going to be just kind of, kind of like this on your screen. They're going to be free floating windows, right? You can put this literally wherever you want to dock it, right? Um, I like to have my stuff like this and then have my my whole OBS over here on my left monitor. And then I just look over and boom, my chat's right there. Um, and also setting up stream, you've changed your title here. You're going live notification, your game that you're playing, uh, audience, if you want to go subs only, whatever the case may be. And you just click done and it, everything's automatically updated. The chat's live to Twitch. It's linked directly to your Twitch. Uh, so it's really cool. The stats, the stats is a big one too. And it's probably going to be a free floating window that pops up once you click on it. So this is important. I use this. You should always be using this. Um, having this just there is great. Um, it shows you your FPS, your average render time. You know, if you're having drop frames, your bit rate, all of this stuff, your CPU usage, blah, blah, blah. It's really useful stuff, especially if you start dropping frames. Um, it's, if it's... If you're missing frames due to rendering lag or encoding lag, you can figure out exactly what what is happening here. You can see it happen and, you know, take a step back and be all like, all right, I need to fix this. And then, you know, take those steps. Usually if it's kind of like, if you're just getting frames here and there, you're all right. If it starts jumping like hundreds at a time and it starts like blinking red and it will, that's when you're all like, okay, we need to adjust some settings here and fix it. So that's pretty much the few tips that I have, and they will help tremendously, I promise you. Once you do it, you're gonna just wanna just facepalm and be like, why didn't I do this sooner? And I just did a few basic tips on switching over from Streamlabs to OBS. If you have your own tips that help you out, go ahead and throw them in the comments, see if you can help somebody else out. All about helping people out and making streams look pretty and all of that stuff. But yeah, other than that, that's all I got for you. Appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.